Welcome back, everyone, to another edition of Rudy's Rants, powered by Come On Now, the podcast. I am your host, Rudy Rodriguez Shomont, and boy, do I have another rant for you today. Sure do. It is now August 13th. We have a couple more days before the WNBA gets back going. Um, three three days before Caitlin Clark will see the floor again. I think she plays on the 16th or 17th. Got to confirm that. But let's jump on this last Olympic topic involving Team USA. And I got a comment on it because I was commenting about it the entirety of the Olympics, the lack of ratings, the lack of attention, the lack of people giving a shit, and the fact that NBC Peacock was not releasing the ratings of the prior games after the second game this during these Olympics. So we have ratings for the cha- the gold medal game involving Team USA and France that started at 9.30 a.m. Sunday morning, Eastern Standard Time, which means it started at 6.30 a.m. Western Pacific Time. Not a lot, I mean, not a lot of people wake up at 6.30 in the morning on a Sunday. I presume, I don't know, I am not awake before 12 noon on Sundays. But if you wanted to watch something, you would wake up. The same way people who will stay up till 2 o'clock in the morning to watch a 10.30 basketball game on the East Coast that's being played in Los Angeles or Portland or wherever, they'll stay up. And this happens to be a weekend, so if you really wanted to watch, you'd watch. Here are the ratings for the gold medal game. As you can see, U.S. women's basketball viewership, the last five gold medal games. The ratings for this gold medal game between the U.S. and France was 7.8 million viewers on average. There was a peak of 10.9 million between 11, 1130, around there, 11 to 1130, because that was the end of the game. And that was um, when people who maybe woke up a little bit later or clicked on their phone and saw, oh, shit, the U.S. might lose. And they figured, let me turn it on now because, yeah, I didn't think they had a shot. I didn't think there was a shot and shit of them losing, yet they were trailing in the fourth quarter. So, yeah, there was a little splite, a little burst at the end. But take a look. 7.8 million viewers was the average. In 2021, during COVID in Tokyo, during a time in which the the time difference was so bad, I mean, you didn't know when games were going on, 7.9 million viewers. 2016 in Rio, 8.1 million viewers. London, 2012, that's 12 years ago, 10.2 million viewers. 2008, Beijing, 5.9 million. Again, that's a Far East country, so... Again, we have time issues there. What do you think? I know what I think. I know it's exactly what I said it would be. I know I'm going to use the terminology where I'm going to say no one watched it. And obviously that is a hyperbolic statement. But let me give you a comparison. Team USA men played against Team France on Saturday. 19.5 million viewers. Let that sink in. 19.5 million. This is during a time in which women's college basketball in the Final Four and in the National Championship absolutely annihilated the men's tournament. This is at a time where a one-game sample of Iowa versus South Carolina in the national championship game absolutely annihilated the, the NBA finals per game. This is at a time where both of the final four games 
sorry, the Iowa Yukon game, not both. Iowa Yukon outdrew the NBA finals. This is a time in which Iowa LSU in the regional final outdrew the NBA finals. But you think that this is a good number? This is an atrocious number. This is your country playing for gold against the world. And you think this is a good number. If you think this is a good number, then you just don't know basic, I don't know, business, marketing, whatever you want to call it. But if you, as you can see, in 2012, they drew 2.4 million more viewers on average. Remember, Team USA is playing the gold medal game pretty much every year. So, this is what NBC Peacock has been hiding. Because we don't know what the three games in between look like, right? Let's go look at them. Let's go take a look real fast. So, Caitlin Clark's six games of the NCAA tournament outperform all of the six Olympic games. If you go in order, because that's how we're going to do it. We're going to do it first round, 3.7 million against Holy Cross. Can you name a player on Holy Cross? Do you even know where Holy Cross is? Second round, so 3.7 million to 3 million. Second round against West Virginia, 4.7 million to 2.1 million. Then we don't know what the ratings were. We can presume that they were far less than 7.8 million. In fact, I think we could probably presume that they were around the 2 million, the 2 million mark that you had in the second round, the second, the second game that uh, Team USA played. Colorado versus Iowa in the Sweet 16 damn near drew as much as the gold medal game. Let that sink in. And if you want to go and extend it, let's go take a look. Remember, three games not announced. And we've looked everywhere. I've watched tons of podcasts. No one has these numbers, which means they're bad. Let's go look right here as we continue. LSU versus Iowa to 12.3 million viewers. That was a... An Elite Eight game, a regional final. UConn, Iowa did 14.4 million. Final Four. South Carolina, Iowa did 18.9 million national championship. And actually, I think the peak for that game was over 20 million. It was in the 2022 range. It's around there. It was, it was higher than 20 million, the peak number for Iowa versus South Carolina. But y'all are going to sit here and tell people that cheer for Caitlin Clark, that are fans of Caitlin Clark, that Caitlin Clark wouldn't have had an impact on those numbers? Let me give you an example real fast. Let me give you an example. My partner Nick and I were going back and forth tonight about he wanted to watch the game. We both watched the game. Full disclosure, we both watched the game. We both watched the game on recording after, well after the game ended because I wasn't awake at 9.30, and despite the fact that he's an early riser, he didn't even watch it because he didn't have any, he says he didn't have any idea what time the game was at. If you don't know what time the game is at, you really had no interest in watching it because he damn sure knew what time the U.S. men played on Saturday. He, claimed, he tells me he assumed and he thought it would be the same time. I don't know why he thought that. Schedules are schedules. How about if you really want to know, you look it up. Point being, he didn't watch it, and he didn't watch it live. Now, he didn't watch it live for the very same reason that most of us who didn't watch it didn't watch it. We didn't watch it because Caitlin Clark wasn't in the, on this team. We didn't watch it because we just didn't care. And that's the feeling that Team USA gave us. We just don't care. But people are going to, I've seen posts now on Facebook where someone's record performance. This is not a record performance. I just showed you the numbers of the last four Olympics. It's been worse. And think about the fact that the numbers of 2008 in Beijing, Peacock did not exist. Streaming apps did not exist like this. So the things that allow people to watch it more, like the Peacock app and, and so forth, 
They did not exist back then. There were a few streaming apps, but possibly, I don't remember. God, that's 16 years ago. I was 30 years old. Um, I, I don't remember streaming apps really existing in 2008. So you had other op- you had options in how to watch a game today that you didn't have 16 years ago. And the internet was way different in 08 than it is now. I mean, obviously, it's far more advanced comparatively. There are just so many ways to watch the game. You can watch it on your phone. Back then, you couldn't watch a game on your phone. You'd have to go watch it on a television set. You didn't have YouTube TV. You didn't have, you didn't have all these different options. You had cable TV, direct TV, or regular TV. Like, this type of thing is it, 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 crazy, man. It's crazy that people really think that there was some record set. There wasn't a record set. Understand the terminology when people say no one cares. Again, hyperbolic statement. Somebody does care. There are people that do care. But a lot more people would have cared if the one, the only Caitlin Clark had been on this team. A lot more people would have cared if Angel Reese had been on this team. A lot more people would have cared if Arika Ngobawale would have been on this team. A lot more people would have cared if Kennedy Carter was on this team. Why? Because they're better than the players that were on the fucking team. Beyond the fact that Caitlin Clark has a cult-like following, that the, that the Team USA Olympic Committee completely blew for the WNBA, especially not considering the fact that the WNBA just, just, has just been hit with an absolutely massive lawsuit by Dierica Hamby, who just played in the Olympics and won a bronze medal in the three-on-three, for discrimination in the workplace because she had a baby. And Becky Hammond made her feel like complete and utter garbage. And Becky Hammond allegedly violated so many different areas of human resources law that it's ridiculous. Employment law that's ridiculous. If, if Becky Hammond has a job at the end of the year, it would be absolutely flabbergasting. But you had an opportunity to blow it up, blow up the blow the WNBA up at an international level, get viewership that would, viewership that at the very least would have been close to the men. I don't know if they would have drawn 19.5 million. I'm going to guess it would have been at least 14, 15. But you never know. It might have drawn as much as the men. But it didn't. And then you get to re- look at stuff like this, where you have a certain somebody jumping on because, you know, this is what she does. This is Caitlin Clark report. Clark played in three college basketball games this, this year with higher viewership than the Olympic gold medal match. This year had the lowest gold medal viewership since 2008. Jamel Hill says, but I thought nobody was going to want, going to never mind. Okay, exactly. Never mind, Jamel, because the fact of the matter is Caitlin Clark outdrew the, the Olympic team while she was in college. While she was in college, she outdrew the Olympic team. Let that marinate for a minute. How is this a good look? How is this not embarrassing? But yet there's people that are going to sit here and say, well, they had great ratings. They had record ratings. They didn't have record. They did not have. They did not have record ratings. They didn't have the ratings of 2012. They didn't have the ratings of 2021. They did not have the ratings of 2016. So, in fact, their ratings since 2012 have gone like this. Despite the fact they have Peacock Streaming Network that basically shows the game on your phone. Or on a tablet. On a computer. You can watch games today in so many different ways that you could not watch back then. You can watch them on your computer, on your phone, on your tablet, on your television. You can watch them anywhere. You can watch these games any, any, there's so many, there's a variety of ways to watch the game that you could not do eight years ago, 12 years ago, let alone 16 years ago. But hey, you keep believing that the impact of Caitlin Clark was not felt in these Olympics. It absolutely was. The impact was felt in a way that was so negative for the WNBA and so negative for Peacock that they hid the fucking ratings for three straight games. For three straight games, they hid the ratings so that you wouldn't see how embarrassing the lack of viewership was for this team. This unlikable as fuck team. 
Does it change the fact that I wanted them to win? I thought they'd win easily. I was wrong. I thought I wanted them to win. I'm an American. I want them to win. I thought they'd win easily, and I was wrong. And you want to know what else I, I know would have, would have happened? Because I watched that fucking dreck of the game. If Caitlin Clark was on that court, they would have won by 20. Because they'd have been playing a track meet against France. So they'd been running that ball up and down the floor. France would have been run off the floor. But because they're walking the ball up the court, and Cheryl Reeve has her offense, and they're dragging it up the floor, slow as shit, turning the ball. Oh, remember, I thought Caitlin Clark turns the ball over. The U.S. had 19 turnovers in that game. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, Caitlin Clark's the turnover machine, right? But yeah, the U.S. had 19 turnovers in that game. <clears throat> they couldn't hold the ball. They were sloppy with the ball. They were loose with the ball. The game was terrible. And yeah, people are going to be saying, oh, we won gold. That's all that matters. Yeah, I guess in theory, no, it's not. The, the bottom line for sports is money, not winning. We can sit here and we can, we can joke and kaha, kiki, and all that shit. The bottom line for sports is money. It ain't winning. It's never been winning. It's never been, at least not in the last 35 years. It's been money. Because if, 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 the, if, the, if the end all goal in sports was winning, players would not, out, would not bid themselves so high and price themselves so high that they can't have teammates to help them win. But they don't do that. At least in the NBA, in the NFL, in every sport. They will get max dollars for what they think they are they are deserving of, what the market commands, and they will get paid that. And more power to them. They will get paid that. But that doesn't mean that they're more concerned about winning. They're more concerned about getting paid. And for a franchise, for a league, what does it matter if you win championships if you're losing $10 million a year? Winning is cute. I guess it's, it's cute. but. If I'm a, if I'm an owner of a franchise and my fucking team is losing me 10, 20 million dollars every year, I don't care about how many games we've won. I want to know because if we won a championship and still lost 20 million dollars, what's the where is the disconnect? Where is that disconnect? Because there's a disconnect here where I'm losing 20 million bucks but we're winning. You want to know why the Florida Marlins and the, the now the Miami Marlins would fire sell their whole team because despite winning two World Series, they lost millions of dollars. They lost money. They could not sustain payroll because people during the season did not go to games because their television deal was complete trash. The bottom line has always been dollars. The WNBA needs dollars. It's a broke league. It has no real, it has no, it has no profit. So yeah, they need People to watch it. They need people to buy tickets. Not for they need people to buy tickets. Not just in Indiana. Not just when Caitlin Clark goes somewhere, but when other teams play. They need the talent levels to go up. Because the talent level in the WNBA is pathetic. The fact that Gabby Williams is not in the WNBA is embarrassing. I know there's some stories I read where, you know, she had some issues with, in Chicago, blah, 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 whatever. The fact that that woman is not playing in the, w, in the WNBA is absolutely insane. Insane. She's hella good. But is she hella good enough to beat 12 WNBA All-Stars? Or have, or have them within one point? They wouldn't have been a one-point game if you had some of those other players on there because the guard play was so bad over the course of that tournament and overall the the the, 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 the power forward post game was basically Asia Wilson and and uh, Brianna Stewart and everyone else was pretty much terrible. More power to Brianna Stewart and Asia Wilson because they carried this team for pretty much the entire tournament and Jackie Young had a couple of really good games which is why she was starting the rest of the way. But yeah, man, this this was. This is just an example. And, you know, Jamel Hill, yeah, you think that people were, yeah, no one cared. In comparison to what should have cared, nobody cared. Yeah, no one watched. If you think seven, if you think your ratings going down this year from 21 during COVID is good, 
from 16, from 12. Ratings should be going up, not down. But they went down because you left the player that could have got you all the ratings. You left her at home. What are your thoughts, folks? What do you think of these ratings? What do you what do you think of that in comparison? I mean, how they Peacock and NBC hit these ratings and so forth. Um, leave, a, leave a comment. Leave a thought. I'd love to hear what you guys say. Like this post. Comment on this post. Share it. Ring that bell. Subscribe and all that stuff. And hit us up on all of our platforms. Come on now.